everyone. Terry Welbrock here, host of the Healing Place podcast. And just wanted to share with you, I'm recording from my closet. <laughs> so you're probably like, why are you recording in your closet? Well, uh, I have started doing narrations for audiobooks, and I'm very, very excited. Um, the first one I was recently released in the last two weeks, and it is the Energy Medicine Solution. So that one was written by 25 different healers, amazing, amazing, amazing collection of uh, stories in that book. You can find it on Audible, and I will put a link in the show notes uh, for this episode. So if you're listening in on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you're tuning in, uh, or YouTube, you can scroll down and find the link, um, or go to, um, if you already have Audible, and you want to use one of your credits, uh, or just purchase it outright, you can find it um, under, you can look up me, Terry Welbrock, as a narrator, uh, T-E-R-I-W-E-L-L-B-R-O-C-K, uh, or the Energy Medicine Solution. I also have a second one that's currently in review. All of the production work is completed on it, and that is The Wellness Woman. So that will be coming out, hopefully, very, very soon, once the approval process is done. And I'm working on books three and four, which um, is very exciting by the same author, and that is... Uh, Bedtime Stories for Stressed Out Adults. So, and in, in that has background music and meditations in it. So those are uh, going to be coming out. I'm in recording process uh, on book three right now. And, uh, and then once that has finished, I'll start on book four. So, so yes, I found that recording from my closet made it a little soundproof room and uh, it was very nice. So I thought, oh, my microphone's upstairs. I might as well record this intro up in the closet. <laughs> so anyway, there you go. All right. Super, super, super excited about these audio books. Just another way to bring more healing and light and love into your lives. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of this show. Thank you for inviting others to be a part of the show and just for you to share it with others. Uh, and let them know that the Healing Place podcast is here and that they can visit terrywellbrock.com and find uh, other resources, many of which are free. Uh, I even have a resource page on there, as well as uh, the series that I did, the Healers of Hilton Head series. If you want to tune into that, it all has its own page on my website. And I'm going to be adding all of these audiobooks to the book tab on that page as well sometime in the next few weeks. All right, and I'll keep on recording these audiobooks. I'm so excited to have found this uh, and being able to, again, uh, my focus is going to be on healing books, so to offer those for all of you. All right, have a great day, and now for today's episode. Welcome, everybody, to the Healing Place podcast. I'm your host, Terry Welbrock, and my heart is very happy and smiling because every time I come on, we have a little conversation with guests before uh, hitting record, and I'm just always beaming because I just love these amazing souls who keep coming across my path. So today we have Rachel Oz, and she is a psychologist, illustrated self-help author, art playgroundist her own coin term, which I absolutely love, and clothing ambassador, which I'm super excited to learn about, who loves listening to the beauty in people. Rachel has her newest book releasing, or released, I guess, in 2022, and is excited to talk about it. So welcome, Rachel. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here, Terry. Yes. Well, I'm excited to learn about so many things. I know on the questions that uh, we have, we met through PodMatch, connected through PodMatch, and... Um, 
I was going through some of the questions to see if any were like, oh, I'll throw that in to some of my questions. And I think I put stars by almost all of them because I, I wanted to learn so much about what it is you're doing. So so talk to us first about Playgroundist. What is that? Mm-hmm. Well, as you mentioned, it's a, it's a term I made up. And what it means is that when I create art, it feels like I'm a child again. I'm on the playground. I'm with my friends. I'm on the swings. We're running along the field. The wind is in our hair and we're free. And so it that felt even more honest, like art playgroundist. I love that. And you know, it's so funny because we live on Hilton Head Island and we were at the beach two days ago. And I decided, oh, I was just going to lay out a blanket and lay on my belly for a little bit. And I was just laying there and I thought, oh, I forgot to bring a book. So I picked up a read. You know, there was a bunch of debris from a storm that had, had come in with the with the tide. And so I picked up a read and I just started doodling in the sand and I was writing like, you know, messages and I was playing and I could looked up and there were these kids just cackling and laughing and oh. playing and buckets and shovels flying. And I just smiled to myself because I thought, I wonder why us adults don't just return to that. And we, we just stop ourselves from that just pure joy. And so I just wow. allowed myself that moment to just doodle and have fun because I, I had a stick and some sand. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, that's beautiful. And what an observation and allowing yourself that sense of wonder again. And where is that in me now? And I also love the double meaning of read, like you wanted a book and you picked up a read, which I know what you mean in in the term of stick, but you read something else, right? Oh, I love that. I didn't even put that together. That's so awesome. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, Terry, you're clearly awesome. Um, (laughs) And I think it's so true when we just take another glimpse at ourselves, that there's just stuff to decode and be in awe of, maybe way more often than we actually do that, you know. Um, But I love that. And I hear your point about um, the playground and where is that in me now? Yeah. And well, I know I read something that you had written or discussed possibly about like clothing. And I know you're a clothing ambassador, but allowing your your expression to be, just be you. Just mm-hmm. just allow yourself to come forth. Um, mm, yes. And definitely. so do you work with people? Uh, and, and that's the, the message that, that you're giving out to folks that you work with? Yeah. And so are you asking in terms of my particular role as a clothing ambassador? Yeah. Or as a clothing whole? and your role as a playgroundist. It almost seems right. intertwined, which I'm Yeah, it is. It. You're right. You're right. You're on to me, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, it's a it's a definite passion of mine to convey through joy and through depth. Uh, an invitation to listen to ourselves and to honor our true essence and let that out. And if we don't feel safe being seen and heard and letting out who we are, um, then doing the precious work, whether with a therapist or whatever kinds of supports get us there to create a sense of safety um, in our lives to be able to get there. Um, But through my clothes, Um, I'm an ambassador for two different clothing companies that I just am gaga for. Um, One is a Swedish designer. Her name is Gudrun Sodian, and I'm wearing her today. Um, And the other is Magnolia Pearl. You could Google either one or both. Um, And they just have, that role has come through organically, you know, just out of me, um, discovering these people, these circles, this, these clothings that felt like me, that made me giggle, that, that looked like my own drawings on the girls and women that I illustrate. <clears throat> and so it felt miraculous. Like, wait a minute, like Pinocchio, they came to life, you know, they're speaking and they're hopping onto my body and they're asking to go dance and to invite people along. And, Um, they truly feel like an authentic expression. So it's just a joyful, joyful road. Um, And sometimes people will say, well, that's not quite me. 
to wear bright colors or a mix of patterns. And I say, well, that's fine. That's the whole point is listening to what does feel like you. Like I have a dear friend and she wears a lot of blacks, grays, browns, earthy colors. And I celebrate that because that's what she feels at home in. Um, and then of course, in my psychological work and in my art and book making work, I mean, the messages are always about what do we need to uncover, unveil, listen to, be gentle with, love up, nurture, have compassion for in ourselves, to beckon um, your true essence to express herself and really be here. Oh, I adore you. Like, again, oh. I your energy. <laughs> I mean, just what a beautiful message. And I have to be honest with you and the audience and tell you, when I was getting dressed this morning and saying, all right, I got this podcast interview at 10. And so I, I just grabbed a shirt. I, I asked Google what the weather was and it's in like the mid seventies. And I said, Oh, I'll wear a long sleeve shirt. So I pulled yeah. the shirt out, threw it on. And as I came downstairs and was getting ready for this, I said, I should go change my clothes and put a brighter shirt on. Like I should be colorful. And what? then I realized I was shooting myself uh. and I said, no, this is me, like my island wear, just a hoodie and some shorts. And, oh, and, oh. and so I said to myself, I like, I stopped mm -hmm. myself from the mm -hmm. shooting and Go said ahead. exactly what you just said. Just mm -hmm. be you, Terry. This is what you wear. Like, this is your thing. So That's I love exactly it that you said it. exactly right. Oh, oh my gosh. And I love that you said it, Terry, and did it and wore it and, and are it, right? Yeah, you know, I think about a line, um, you may or may not know her, the poet Mary Oliver, uh, the poem is called Wild Geese. And, you know, when you just say one sentence out of a whole poem, it's like chopping it up a little bit unfairly. But there is a line in that poem that's something like uh, an invitation of let the soft skin of your body love what it loves, you know. And so, yes if that particular top and shorts feel so soft and easy and cozy and co comfy and, and akin to the island and to you and the island of Terry, then by all means, let the soft skin of your body love what she loves. Oh my gosh, you made my heart smile with that one with the, the oh. island of Terry. That's so yes. awesome. <laughs> yes, well, she is. Yeah, yeah, yes. oh and we gosh. are, and we are. That's awesome. Yeah. I absolutely love it. I love oh. it. So you brought up illustrating. So you mm. recently released a book, correct? I did. I did. It's yeah. called the Relationship Book, and it's really about um, loving ourselves in all our relationships. So the taking the time to really ponder what is this relationship like with myself and how do I nurture that and reflect on it? You know, how am I, how am I loving myself? Um, and so that's the first chapter. Um, and the rest of the chapters are a variety of different relationships, relationship with our clothing, um, with food, with animals, with people, with community, with divinity. And each page spread has my colorful illustrations, um, an anonymous client quote about that topic, a therapy client quote that I got permission to use. And then my own um, written reflection of that quote, that's a bit sort of prosy or poem-like. Um, so it's a mix of being very light, like it's easy to take these light bites, but they're deep at the same time. And I wrote it during the pandemic, the height of the pandemic, um, when it became so clear that our relationships are so important to us and we were experiencing this increased isolation. And we were working so hard to find our way back to one another. And I just felt really moved um, to send out really a love letter to people um, in this way. So... Yes. Yeah, so it's the relationship book. 
Oh my gosh, how beautiful. And again, it just, Aww. my heart hugs yours because it's oh. just a, it's a, such a beautiful, I, I love that you said a love letter to people because mm -hmm. wow, was it needed during that time? I did a pandemic self-care series at the time, uh, again, at the peak of the pandemic and invited my podcast guests to come back on and the response was so beautiful. I think 36 previous guests came back and joined me for some Facebook live chats, but oh talked about those exact things and relationship was a very big key word that was coming up. Um, mm -hmm. And just, you know, the isolation factor that was happening at the time, um, people were feeling so disconnected. So yeah, thanks for that it's, love letter. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And I'm so glad that you were keying into that and doing these offerings as well. And I, my intuition is really, you know, and I uh, just line this up with all listeners to tune into their too, is that I don't think we're supposed to come out of a time like this without being changed somewhat or being more awake. Um, and, um, and I think that's true, really, of any kind of suffering. Um, you know, for example, I've just, I'm not fully out of the woods, but um, the last three months, I've um, been diagnosed with something which I never heard of before called thyroiditis which is a thyroid disorder, but it's not treatable. And it's supposed to last on average, maybe four months, and I'm three months in, and I'm much better, but not 100%. And, you know, it's really sapped my energy. And it's sort of forced me to have a lot more quiet, and less work. And, um, and so it's been a really um, difficult time, but also beautiful time, I've used it this way to really listen to my life and to what will help to even deepen and strengthen in a much even greater way. Like what's calling me as I go forward? Like my suffering is not meant to just have me grow more bitter and smaller, but to grow bigger. Um, and so out of the pandemic, out of different kinds of suffering, it's like, what's, what are these relationships in my life? And how am I prioritizing them and my time and my, my own depth, and my own profound life and being here? Um, and, and sort of just really looking at that in a life giving way. Right. Oh, I could not agree more. I've said it so often mm -hmm. on this show. People are probably sick of hearing me say it, but <laughs> finding the gifts within the chaos. You know, yes. As yes. Said, this this pandemic, mm -hmm. there's so many silver linings from it. And that is one of the things that for those who are open to it, open to the right. possibilities of growth and learning. Right. Um, Wow. I, I too have been on a physical <clears throat> journey, mm. had horrific trauma throughout my childhood and I had overcome that through a lot of different modalities. And mm. then all of a sudden this physical illness came upon me, was thrust mm. upon me. And mm. was, I certainly had my woe is me moments, but then I said, I practiced what I preached and, and sat back and said, okay, exactly what you just said. And I'm so glad you said it about, mm. let's just pause. So I started meditating and mindfulness and all of that oh, stuff to help yeah. me listen to my body mm -hmm. rest and say, what, what is it that I need? Yeah. Exactly. I'm so with you. I can't, I mean, we'd need a slumber party to go into I all know. those things. Yes. No, that is so good. And I think I haven't thought of this metaphor yet until now with you. Um, because I think of the island of Terry right now, um, that, you know, out of the storm, out of the sort of rush and your word chaos, I was picturing when the, you know, all the different weather patterns and how that affects the ocean's waves or stillness or in between. And when the waves really pick up against the shore, I just think about out of that chaos and storm, um, the treasures that wash up, the seashells, the agates, the um, sea glass, the um, just all that washes up the um, starfish or the no, the coins. What are those? Oh, coins? yeah, the sand dollars. Sand dollars. Thank you. Um, that that's that's also us that when we're in chaos in a storm and bigger waves and um, that if we look and we, we listen and we stop and, you know, look down or look within all those treasures wash up. Oh, we don't want to miss that. them. 
Yes, right? it's so true. It's so yeah. true. I have to tell you, as you're speaking, uh, well, one and reeds that look like a bunch of mess on the island, but well, heck, you know, if you're oh, laying on your belly and don't yes. have a book, you can yes. grab one and doodle. <laughs> yes. But oh my gosh. What I had to share was, so Hilton is renowned for our amazingly beautiful white beach it's like steps beautiful white sand and just go yeah. it's 12 miles of, of beach and it's just absolutely gorgeous and renowned yes. for it but during the latest storm surge when all the reed and all that was you know the junk was brought forth right it also brought all of these shells which we don't oh. normally have a ton of shells but there's like this oh. just this layer now uh and a, just a strip of and the sand is kind of orangey and different than the white that we normally see with all of these little tiny shells. And mm. I, when I was laying there and I was thinking, wow, this is, this is so not like our normal, but it was, it was just a treasure. And I saw moms and kids walking along, like looking down and picking up shells. And I thought, this is new. This is something amazing that came from our you know, mm -hmm. just off our coast, but was brought exactly. forth. I exactly. love it. Exactly. Me too. And I love that you just immediately saw that and recalled it. And then I just was thinking earlier how you said, you know, I picked up a read and a different kind of reading. And and the here, here it is again, like out of the chaos, like let's read this and, you know, read our very lives. And, um, and of course, as a psychologist, this is what I'm always on the lookout for is that I think, especially out of suffering, when pe people can feel safe enough to do it, that this is where some of the greatest wisdom and nuggets and growth and strength can come from, you know, and be found. Uh, but it feels like such a paradox, like, how could anything wonderful come out of this, you know? Right. Um, I feel moved in a sweet, light way, if I could, to share, because of the whole um, theme we're on right now of the ocean and the um, et cetera, to read a quick thing from my newest book, could I? It's Absolutely. very light and sing-songy. Yeah. Okay. And this, um, okay, I don't know if everyone, some people are maybe just listening, but here's the illustration for anyone who's able to see. It's huh. an eye. Um, in, in the eye, it says amazing eyes. Um, and, and so again, the format is anonymous client quote that took my breath away somehow, and then my written reflection. And so I'm going to read these real quick. Sure. So the client said, he doesn't like the Beatles, but I can forgive him because of his amazing eyes. <laughs> and, and then I wrote waves and whales in his ocean blue with salt and sand and starfish too, teeming krill and manatee, joined by seahorse company, so much life in this sapphire sea where I'm in real deep and happy to be. <laughs> um, and that was out of a chapter, oh, that was out of a chapter about relationship with people, you know, um, which is a, one of my lighter you know, it's, it's a very, that one's a really light one and sort of a crushy one. Um, but, you know, the idea, I just felt moved because here we are, we're talking about yes. what washes up and in the actual waters, but also in the waters of ourselves and in our relationship with people. Um, oh, well, thank you for sharing. It was, it was awesome. And I, 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 I'm very excited to read your book and, and dive in because it's, Aww. yes, I mean, it just very much resonated with me. And what I'm hearing a mm -hmm. lot mm -hmm. in in your work and in what you do is a just mindfulness is, is mm. an underlying current. Is mm. that a purposeful thing that mm. uh, you bring into your work to help clients really pause and, and be mindful of um, not not only the beauty around them, but what's coming up inside. I think so. I think um, uh, two things come to mind, although again, another slumber party, we could talk about that question at length. Um, and so one thing is that we do have this observer self inside us that I think is so helpful to tune into so that the whole range of what we experience in our lives from elation and contentment to 
uh, devastation and sadness, et cetera, just that when we can realize I can feel these feelings, but I can also observe I'm having them. And who is this observer self inside me? Who's watching and who can also be compassionate for all these different parts of me who are happy, sad, anxious, and all kinds of experiences. Well, the observer in me is whole. The observer in me is quite capable of feeling compassion, is quite capable of being in conversation with myself, of saying, Rachel, I notice you're really watching, clinging to that way of being, or you're really feeling that and loving myself even in that space. Um, that there's something in that mindfulness, that observer self without judgment, that is so useful and freeing and helpful. Um, and so the other thing I want to say, that's just sort of a random thought about mindfulness and about what I bring forward is I'm someone who loves words a lot that comes through in my therapy work and talking to you and writing my books, et cetera. Um, and so I think there's a mindfulness about that, about realizing words hold so much power. And when whatever words I'm selecting here, they're creating something. And I need to, I, I need to, and I want to, and I feel moved to um, be mindful of my words because what I'm offering you and to anyone else listening is potentially creating something. And that's our responsibility. And it's one I want to take on um, because we can be offering healing and opportunities to and invitations to one another through our words. So I want to be observant of them. Wow. That's like one of the oh. mind-blowing moments because we're creating an episode, right? That yeah. people are going to tune into over and over and over and over. Like even years from now, people mm. are still going to be listening. Mm. And wow, very powerful. Mm. Yes. So mm. these things that are coming out of our mouths, <laughs> that's creating this and this message. Yes. Yeah. Our words create sand castles, don't they? And the sand dollars and... um the hearts what did you say about hearts that you liked because you were talking about art on your wall before we started recording yeah well I collect them I, I find them everywhere every day I, 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 whether okay. it's a wad of gum on the sidewalk or a cloud yeah. in the sky I, I yes. see yeah yeah and I think our words also create hearts and they um, expand hearts and they can contract hearts through words and through our presence and it's um, it, it's a powerful thing to be aware of. Yes. Wow. Well, again, I could sit and talk to you for, I don't know, days, <laughs> a whole slumber party weekend. Right. Um, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about anything we haven't had a chance to talk about yet. Mm, I think the last thing I'd like to say maybe is that everything we go through is a chance um, if we use it this way, to connect with ourselves and with other people and to love ourselves and other people. If I skin my knee, something ordinary and awful like that, it's a chance to extend compassion to myself. If I feel like crying, go ahead and cry and wipe my tears and give myself an ice cream cone or a nap or a, or a phone call with someone who might care. Um, you know, I... <laughs> That is such a simple example, but our lives are made up of those ordinary everyday things. And I think that every single thing we encounter is a chance to deepen that love for ourselves and for being here. Well, that's a perfect way to end this conversation. So thank you. Well, how You're do welcome. folks connect with you and mm. where can they find your book? Mm. Um probably, I mean, you can Google my name, Rachel Oz, A-W-E-S, like the beginning of awesome as a way to remember spelling. Um, but Rachel Oz, you could Google 
Instagram, Facebook, any of those things and find me, but probably my central hub is racheloz.com. And through that in the header at the top, you can click on shop, which would bring you to my online Etsy shop, um, where my books and art prints are. Um, and, you know, or to um, a, my about page or my home page or whatever, I have a number of page freebies, you know, things you can get for free. Um, so I would, you know, it would just be fun to hear from people. I also always love to hear from people, but you can find me easily through that hub. Awesome. All right. Well, it's just been such a joy to have you here. And uh, thank you. Thank you for shining your beautiful light and your healing work that you do. Oh, thank you for having me. This has just been such a flowy, glowy, easy peasy, lovey dovey conversation. Thank you. for Amen. Having me. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us today on the Healing Place podcast. And remember, until next time, be gentle with yourself. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. Terry Welbrock again. Just wanted to thank you for listening to the episode today and remind you to visit my website as well, terrywellbrock.com. You can sign up for my monthly Hope for Healing newsletter, which is also jam-packed with information and strategies and blog pieces and guest blog pieces and links to shows. Thanks for, again, being here and being a part of this healing space. I very much appreciate you. All right. Bye-bye.